welcome to Super Woo Radio, where we are awakening into being free and sovereign. It's a place where minds hurt and hearts sing as we break through the barriers that have been holding us back. Be prepared to have belief systems confronted as we take the journey of the truth seeker for answers to life's biggest questions. Remember, truth is stranger than fiction. So come along for an awareness expanding experience with George and his amazing guest. Here on Super Woo Radio. Hello and welcome magnificent earth humans and all you other wonderful beings throughout the universe listening to our multidimensional broadcast here on Super Woo Radio, episode number 32. Matt Reed is a normal 26-year-old guy who decided to see if there was any validity to spiritual concepts. Matt embarked on a path as a skeptic, which led through Christianity, Buddhism, conspiracy theories, Gnosticism, and European occultism, leading up to breakthrough experiences with shamanistic plant tools. Matt discovered powerful spiritual truths during his experiences in the other dimensions. Matt's experiences has inspired a stripped-down view of spiritual common sense and enforced the importance of listening to our own inner voice first and foremost in this world and other realities beyond. This is yet another fantastic and intriguing conversation, bringing you great information and wisdom from an inspirational young man that has learned from a great many experiences. So sit back, relax, get comfy, make yourself at home and enjoy. Welcome to Super Woo Radio. Hey, thank you, George, for having me. Super excited to be here. <laughs> well, it is an honor for me to have you on. Please share just a brief summary for those who are not familiar with you and don't know of you, uh, who Matt Reed is and what's been going on. Just just speaking from my my personal experience of, of what I've, I've been through, um, it's, it's actually been the archetypal story of you put the call out to the universe and suddenly uh, with an authentic heart, the universe will very clearly deliver to you uh, that which you were curious about. Um, you know, I, I really approached this subject matter as a total skeptic. I, I had no idea who the Illuminati was or what, you know, the Anunnaki were or, or any of this. Um, I was just a college student, like normal guy who was more atheist than anything because science, you know, you could prove and I didn't like being raised Catholic. Um, you know, looking back, I, f I feel like kind of almost this archetype of, of sort of my generation, how we were raised and 
um, just just sort of raised into a culture and expected to be a good religious follower and ex expected to just sort of live in the system we were presented with. Um, so this this had really been just this full circle for me um, as I continued to eventually I it started with UFO sightings, but it, it actually got to the point where I actually came in contact with a tall, grill, uh, tall teal skinned uh, gray entity um, who actually attempted to uh, possess my body. Uh, so I had a, a very an actual possession experience, which for a skeptic who was scientifically minded was a very world changing, uh, perspective changing experience. Um, and on, on sort of the flip side of the coin, I, I had also suddenly met with some just extremely radiant beings of light, uh, who could somehow instantly read my consciousness and address every single one of the concerns I had about reality, um, as though they were able to read my genetics itself. Um, since that time I've I've noticed in these experiences that I, I had that we'll we'll get into the specific specifics here in the show, um, kind of having my genetics read and these entities know my entire life story uh, almost better than I even know it uh, would then talk to me in a way with such a complete picture of the universe. Um, like I said before, it's just completely changed my entire perspective with with reality and, and this kind of subject matter um, so I'm I still have the sort of uh, the balance of a skeptic but also the the knowledge from a person who's now experienced these things firsthand Wow that sounds fantastic well what are the sort of experiences that you do want to share in to give us a sort of an idea of, besides the uh, the teal skinned grey entity that wanted to possess your body, which you know the question's got to be asked. You know, did you understand why it wanted to? Or yes, actually, in the in the experience, um, I I should sort of preface. With these experiences, I, I was utilizing uh, shamanic plant tools to uh, to induce these experiences. Um, coming from my kind of skeptic background, I, I wanted something tangible to to sort of pull the lever and see for myself what what this was all about. Um, and essentially, I had made my myself a little easier to connect with when I had done this. Uh, so essentially I was seen as easy pickings at this moment. Um, I had gone up onto a hilltop and asked, Hey, can I talk to an alien? I, I am just in such connection with everything. Um, and I can really see into the fabric of existence right now. And sure enough, an alien showed up and, uh, I hadn't specified to speak to a friendly alien. So the alien that came up to me, the first thing he says to me, I feel this awful energy. Just just the energy itself is, it feels like a, a horror movie. Uh, and he, the first thing he communicates to me is, why do you want to be good? Why are you trying to be good on Earth? That's not what Earth is for. Like, why are you wasting your time? You're, you're setting yourself up for hell trying to be good on Earth. And I'm like... Whoa, buddy, who are you? Um, hey, I want to ask about some, you know, mysteries of the universe and things like this. But he was actually a very upset and very resent resentful entity. The first thing he asks me is, um, who is your master? Who's your master? And, you know, I didn't have a master, but I immediately knew that he did have a master, and this also upset him. So... He, he actually kind of had an attitude that he had a personal bone to pick with me because I, I sort of didn't uh, immediately follow this um, 
you know, he wanted to really have this relationship of I'm the fancy alien impressing you and you're the lowly, al you know, lowly human who is just going to go along with my uh, my discussion here with you. Um, he wanted to scare me. And um, as as the engagement continued, it became very clear uh, that he wanted to get me to energetically put out certain kinds of of emotions um, he he purposely brought out uh, genetic past memories that were very traumatic to me um, suddenly I was being burned at the stake and uh, trying to defend my religious beliefs saying you know you burning me I'm spe I was speaking in another language you burning me is just proving my point even more that we we can't uh, agree um, so this this entity was very interested in these different traumatic moments and would actually uh, sort of feed upon uh, my uh, the different emotions I was going through we're sort of starting this out and in, in the the darker side of things I've had really beautiful experiences as well but I um, I did learn a lot being push to the spiritual limits as this being would shape shift and put me through these diff different energetic uh, rituals to get a to get a different emotional uh, center to come out of me sort of like wringing me dry as much as you know uh, they could possibly this being could get out of me uh, in in that engagement and it really was a struggle to actually um, you know, keep myself from putting this energy out to this entity. Um, so actually, the what what ended up ending it, which was a very powerful spiritual lesson for me, at the very end of it, uh, when I had finally was no longer able to be impacted by whatever this being was doing to me, um, he he was psychically making me very uncomfortable and putting me through very horrible situations. But at a certain point. It just meant nothing to me anymore. I, I saw that this being is just really trying too hard at very petty things to get things that aren't really don't really belong to this individual, and um, I'm I'm not going to participate with being taken advantage of in this way. And at that moment, he became very discouraged with me and actually tossed me away uh, like a like a kind of empty bag of you know, old food or something uh, <laughs> that w wasn't useful anymore. Um, at which point uh, my body did fall apart into all of these different pieces and then uh, come back together again, in which uh, when I had come back together again was when I'd actually awakened from the, uh, the whole ordeal. Uh, kicking and screaming around, for hours on the ground, uh, scaring all of my friends and neighbors, um, and just being in disbelief that that uh, that had actually happened to me, and that that was a very real experience. Wow, crikey! So you're with a group <laughs> of people when it actually happened? Yes, yes, and they um, they actually saw me physically struggling, and this thing. Uh, you know, screaming through my body and laughing maniacally. I, I was looking at my best friends, and they said I looked at them like I didn't even recognize them. And during that time, I unfortunately don't remember um, actually being in the living room at all. I only remember being with this entity in these different spaces uh, mm -hmm. that this entity was psychically projecting. Um, which is just my, you know, that's my best description of what was happening to me, um, as far as I could tell. What a, so, what, what a fascinating experience within itself, my goodness. I mean, that uh, anybody would find that one alone. It must have been life-changing for you in that moment, though. Oh, absolutely. It, it was a feeling of... Um, this, this entity had this attitude of like, oh, this, this is business as usual. Uh, there's nothing new here. Um, I, I really should emphasize, though, I, I really have nothing but love and respect for that uh, individual at this point. 
um, from my other experiences that we're going to get into here shortly. Um, you know, I have nothing but empathy for these beings that are, are truly hurting. Uh, you don't yeah. act that way. You don't act that way towards somebody unless you're lacking love in some place in your life. Um, you know, I, I can understand, I can have this empathy for these, these beings, um, because their actions are sort of speaking for themselves. Uh, they wouldn't be in these positions. They wouldn't have to use these sort of desperate, desperate ploys unless they had been forced into that desperate circumstance themselves. Um, so I actually have nothing but love and respect, um, you know, for, for each of these expressions that, that we live among. Yeah. Wow. Um, I got to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So Matt, one after that experience, what what happened to you, like on a personal level, in regards to your continued relationship with these people? Did feel people feel that you had a psychotic episode and treat you differently? And you know what what was the dynamics of your life soon after that episode? Yeah, you know, I I really had to keep it to myself um, and my close friends. Um, just the people I knew that that weren't going to completely freak out on me and uh, not it's it's happened before when um, just when I started to get into these kinds of things just the hint of being curious about extraterrestrials and altered states of consciousness or conspiracy theories I really had a big falling out with uh, family members and friends over just that. So I knew if I actually got into, well, you know, uh, old Matty boy, uh, you know, he's been off in La La Land and now he's actually talking to aliens. Uh, just sort of, you know, I just knew it was, wasn't going to really pan out necessarily very well. Um, but the, the people in my life, this, this has kind of been something, another sort of lesson in life of, uh, the people who do want to talk about it or the people who are curious, who are open to this kind of subject matter, um, I feel like those people find you. And it's you can actually really tell. There's, there's certain people who just aren't ready for this kind of stuff. And then there's the people who are just, just so excited to hear as much as they possibly can. Um, so I've, I think I've really, I've really seen that with, with just the way I've, how I much how honest I can be with people about these really extraordinary experiences that have happened. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and obviously you've had some experiences experiences since that moment as well, haven't you? Oh yes. Yes. There've there've been quite quite a lot has has happened since then. Um it had sort sort of happened where once I opened the door, the door could only grow wider and wider and wider. And suddenly I realized that I'm walking on a path that I had set up for myself a very long time ago. Um, and to even be a skeptic when I, all of these things started happening to me was, seemed to even be part of, of just this unfolding of this experience that has just sort of been happening to me. So since that, since that experience, um, I guess what I'd, I'd like to first touch on was the first time I went out of my body. Um, I know this is something a lot of listeners and people are curious about, you know, what does it look like? in these other realms. Uh, that's something I'd really like you to talk about as well. What does it look like? What does it feel like, you know, when you're talking to an, another entity? Um, it was something, you know, I, I just didn't, didn't believe until it suddenly was happening. And, oh, it's like this. This is what it's like. Um, and that would be what it would be like communicating to that particular entity, you know, with... Um that level of communication and that environment and it's really difficult to explain because the experiences are so varied 
the, there's so many variations depending on which race, what vibrational paradigm, what form of communication and what is the intentions behind the communication because some of it could be karmic so therefore the framework of the communication is, and the environment is different uh, compared to another one which is you know more exploratory. No, absolutely. Um, in the experiences I've had, the experience will either be completely from left field, uh, like I'm just suddenly showing up, or it will be perfectly correlating to my state of being at that moment. Um, I've, I've literally had experiences where I'm feeling very anxious. I'm feeling very unrelaxed in life. I went into the experience and my entire surroundings were like unstable flames because of my emotional instability. The space around me matched that instability and it actually appeared as though the, the walls are trying to cling on to something to hold themselves together, but there's nothing to hold on to. So it, to my perspective, it actually appears like flames. And I was thinking, you know, my goodness, if someone died in an anxious state and they suddenly saw what I'm seeing right now, they would think I've died and gone to hell. <laughs> and and uh, as soon as I sort of wrapped my head around uh, the circumstance, I, uh, I started to tell myself, okay, just calm down. It's all right. As soon as I calmed myself down, the flames in the walls around me, in perfect correlation with my thoughts and my feelings, calmed down into these stable blue lines that were perfectly stacked. And they were no longer struggling for stability like the flames had been. That emotional stability perfectly correlated with my surroundings. And this has happened to me again and again when I've been out of body. It's, it is so directed by my consciousness, uh, by what I'm focusing on. Um, that's, that's something I just really want, wanted to share with people. Yeah, that's fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. The, the consciousness realm is uh, is a huge labyrinth. I mean, even the human mind is a huge labyrinth. But the realm of consciousness and the way we use that medium, that substance, that uh, that stuff to interact with uh, form in the universe, it's quite uh, quite an amazing labyrinth. It's so vast, and it that, it's malleable. It just moves through form so easily. Oh no, abs absolutely. It's it's been something I've been able to take with me from these experiences. I've I've started using my consciousness in my normal everyday earth life the way I found myself using my consciousness in these other experiences. Um actually building a space of protection for myself or building a space of uh, just happiness and feeling good and feeling empathy towards everything. Um, I, you know, I'd be cooking a meal for somebody and I'm putting in the food with each, you know, part that I'm mixing. I'd put a different good emotional, uh, uh, just a good emotional feeling into everything that I do. And I've just, I've started using my consciousness just just as a tool, thinking of it as like a tool in my hands that, you know, I'm really applying it consciously as opposed to sort of going through life just sort of by the seat of my pants. Hmm. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. Instead of just uh, floating along in zombie land, becoming consciously aware and engaging on a conscious level with your life and, and the reality around you. Absolutely. I'll, you know, I want to go out on a hike. Uh, 
And with every step, I'm thinking of the things I'm just super grateful for in life. And I'm just thinking of how happy I am to be with, you know, all the flowers and all of the insects and everything that's around me and just how I'm appreciative of just how diverse and enjoyable our reality really is. And I get to the end of the hike and I do, I, I'll face the sun and I'll, you know, talk with the sun and talk about what my concerns are, what I'm feeling about what's coming up next in my life and just, you know, how thankful I am for this thing that worked out for me. Um, it's, it's really just been this experience of little did I know I've been forming my own spirituality for myself. Um, and I, I think this is something that, you know, people can do for themselves. We're all re we're always looking outside of ourselves for like, who's that person that, that knows the secret that can help me, um, when really we need to just spend more time with our world and actually just reading it like it's a story, um, just reading the world around us like a book. You know, what is nature telling me specifically? What is it showing me right now at this juncture in my life? And in, in your interaction with nature, uh, the earth and the sun, what, what have you come to understand in relation to why it is we're here and the purpose of this reality? What's been, what's been really beautiful about that is this, this was another thing I was really excited to touch on with you, George, is just simple psychic skills. I couldn't believe when I just opened up to the possibility of listening to that subtle voice inside of just, just asking myself a question about, you know, Oh, what's, what's the story behind that star in the sky? We're so used to pushing down that little voice that would say, well, that star, you know, may have to do with your grandfather or may have to do with, there's these little notions we receive throughout the day. Uh, just sort of like, oh, I wonder what this person is thinking about me. And then we suddenly can hear a little voice in our head of, well, I'm actually, I'm not upset about that. It's all right, you know. And we can kind of almost hear this person in our mind or in our heart. And what I found is if we actually take the time to listen to that subtle voice, we'd be very surprised what we actually would hear. Um, and that's that's coming right from us. So when I'll go out to the sun and I'll say, you know, thank you. I'm just so gracious for everything that you're doing. The, I'm always receiving the, the feedback of thank you for your graciousness. Uh, that conscious energy right now is very helpful for the, the ecosystem of the earth. And the earth has a similar uh, gratefulness for how aware as much as I how aware I can be of you know, her and her actual being and all these components that are her. I'm, you know, I'm always trying to, to keep myself aware as much as I can of, you know, just all the layers that are working. And I'm just so grateful for just the hard work that's being done. Um, and that, that really is, it's sort of like a, a little push of help, that conscious awareness I can feel um, is sort of helping elsewhere where that energy is needed. Um, something specific, though, that I've, I've received is that, um, that actually the sun and the earth are engaging with each other through the humans, through the human bodies, uh, the, the men on this planet and the women on this planet are representative of uh, the different aspects of the sun and the, then on the other side, the different aspects of the earth. Yeah, I've got to agree with you there. That's, um, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's, that one was... Um, it's a big understanding for people to have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think it humanizes the sun and the earth, which is kind of a pun, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it's 
I, th I think it's, I've, I've also gotten, um, you know, we're, we're not necessarily going through individual experiences and all this, but just going with the flow of this conversation, um, I've, I've gotten the impression that nature has this attitude of we're trying here. We're, we're working really hard. We're, we're spinning a lot of plates on a lot of different poles at the same time. And we're really trying to keep, you know, to have everything together. And they've, they've really comforted me saying, you know, every atom is absolutely accounted for, um, yeah. to, yeah. to that, to that degree. Yeah. Uh, not a, not a move out of place ever, but, but the extent to which we're going to push the limit is as far as the limit can even conceivably be pushed. Hmm. So that's, that's why it can feel like, oh, there is so much going on at all, all the same time. Um, but that's, I mean, I've gotten that response from nature of, well, that's, that's where evolution is at. That's where we're at with things right now. We are, we're working through, we're pushing through, uh, every single expression that there possibly could be uh, in one place <laughs> yeah. in one place yeah. and, that, and that that supports the fractalization the fractal nature of this reality and, and our human embodiments oh absolutely this is um you know this this is why i really wanted to talk with you george um you've been an absolute affirmation it was actually a few years after I'd had these experiences that I even came across your work, uh, which was a huge affirmation. Suddenly, I'm not the only crazy guy who's been <laughs> out of my mind and is actually coming back saying, you know, hey, you better watch out out there. It's not all uh, roses and lollipops. Um, I said, thank you. Um, it's And it's it's actually just sort of, like you said, being realist about this stuff. And, and that's, that's been my kind of path with this as I've, I'm still a skeptic, even after all of it. Um, I me, don't know. Me too. Yeah. But, but when we say that, we know we've had some real experiences and there are some experiences that we're, even the real experience, everything will just continue to question the whole way through. Um, cause we need to, it's very healthy and it's part of the actual, you know, uh, process of growth and transformation. So I think to remain skeptical about things is is a very healthy attitude. It's great to hear you say. It. And and what's what's been absolutely remarkable is I've had experiences where uh, well, I'll, what I'll mention a little later here with the the two light beings uh, that I met. Um, they congratulated me for being a skeptic. They said, exactly. "Here, here, here! I would be, a, I'd be a little cautious about some of these uh, mental games that you're going through as well." Sheesh. Um, so good, just, so refreshing to hear you say that because I say to people, you know, of late, I've been saying, you know, our family and friends out there, beings out there that uh, are watching us in here, you know, doubt them, question them. People have spirit guides; they call them spirit guides, right? And uh, which I don't, I don't have any spirit guides. I have family and friends that I hang out with in an interdimensional sense, and those that are supporting me in my journey here, and those that are observing. And uh, and I just say to them, you know, just like a good friend, you can tell them to go and get stuffed for a while, you know, because <laughs> you need space. They're not going to take it personal. I mean, if someone's got what's called a spirit guide and there's a bit of an issue there and you have to have some sort of protocol when you communicate with them and you've got to question that. You really got to question that. Of course, you respect, you know, certain entities and the way you communicate with them. I understand that. But you just throw out an intention to them. It'll be communicated in a particular way and oh, it's so hard to put into words what I'm trying to say here. But, oh, I've... <laughs> Well, what I'm trying to say is that um, your friends and your family, in an interdimensional sense, understand. They understand right. where we're at. And when we dig deep, you know, when we question, we're digging deeper and, and, and they get very excited because it's, it's what they want us to do and it's what we need to do in order for us to uh, achieve our intended outcome. 
No, definitely. It's, uh, it's really night and day. There's been experiences where just to be slightly curious about what are you doing with me? I'm suddenly seated at the head of a table. You've given me a chalice uh, to drink this liquid I'm unfamiliar with, and you're now escorting me into another room. Um, and your your you know the body language is very passively aggressive to get me to do what these beings want me to do. And what as soon a, what as a I, fantastic analogy. No, it's it's very subtle, and it is just it is just in the motive of just those subtleties. Love it. And what's what's been amazing, so in that kind of a situation, I'll say, hey, wait a minute, what are we all doing here? And the response is, oh, we're losing you now. You you have to go. You should have just come with us. Oh, I'm so sorry. And then we're waving goodbye. And it, it just sort of leaves me feeling a little sad that you know, I didn't listen to the heavenly robed people and go with them in the other room or drink uh, their chalice. And, uh, you know, they had a kind of chip on their shoulder about it, which is just a little bit weird. Um, yeah, and you get so, the odd ones that actually uh, react and get all authority on you in that moment. And then when you continue to uh, question, <laughs> um, then they actually get angry. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. So that no that that's a perfect segue into uh, this experience actually. Mm. Um, so suddenly I'm in a beautiful endless heaven. Uh, you know, my God, it was just clouds forever down an endless hallway with misty rainbow light being caught uh, in these sort of etheric clouds that are you know more pristine and beautiful than anything i've i've witnessed through physical eyes how pretty and, and beautiful oh so beautiful george <laughs> i was blinded with my eyes closed it was so beautiful um and and there's these pearly gates sure enough they're pearly golden gates and they had the exact same Classic. patterns exact same patterns as the filigree in the vatican paintings Wow. 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 It was, wow. it was, and then down from the light, of course, come flowing, uh, these four very muscular, uh, bald white monks and they're in the full robes. They are extending their hands to me and they tell me, finally, you have returned the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Wow. And to to put it mildly, I had red flags go off to quite an extent, and they immediately noticed that I had red flags going off. And so I asked them, and this is all inside of my mind, just it, this all happens mentally. That's that was another story I would get into. These entities explain to me how telepathy was working between us. Um, but anyway, in in this instance. The first question I have is, uh, why do you feel you need to present yourself so spectacularly to me? Hmm. Um, also, why are you trying to get me to go on an ego trip that has caused countless of my species just nothing but a self-deluded harm for themselves and their families? Hmm. And am I not just as much of a Christ as any other spirit? is a no, Christ. Exactly. And these beings had the most shocked look on their faces because I didn't go along with the with the heavenly uh, spiel. And suddenly three of them are gone, just woof in a puff of smoke. They're instantly gone and heaven goes with them. I think that they were actually adding to the mental uh, energy source for what I was witnessing. So wow. with three of them, with three of them gone, I was now left in a murky brown astral cavern. <laughs> and the the one the one who remained the one who remained uh, comes up to me. He's he's not this muscular white uh, buff monk. <laughs> he's just he's like a random Middle Eastern guy, and he says, um, "Hey, listen up." 
I can get you some connections to a lot of money, and all you've got to do is take me on as your spiritual advisor. Wow, is that right? That's absolutely right. And I said, so um, what do you have to do with the evil, corrupt system of earth money? And again, he just looked totally shocked, and he knew my answer was a no, and then he also was out of there. Wow, what a fantastic experience. Wow. That, that, was, a very, that was a very, very uh, big eye-opening experience there. Um, and it, it was just me going with my gut. It wasn't me trying to remember what this or that holy book said. It was me as though I was in like a rough bar and some guys came up to me and I'm like trying to feel out what's the circumstance that's happening to me right now. That, that is what helped me through that. Yeah. What a great analogy. That's amazing. Yeah. Well done, Matt. That's a, that's a very, very, very important experience because sharing that helps to, you know, get, get people to understand just how many people behind the scenes on the planet have been hoodwinked in this way already. People that, you know, unlike you, they had more ambition, <laughs> more, <laughs> more ambitious orientated, or, orientated people. And they would fall for these sorts of things more often. So you can imagine people who are positions of power in politics uh, that run, you know, in the corporate level of things, who behind the scenes have got these connections going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That, um, no, absolutely. And, you know, if you can only imagine going through each degree um, of, you know, the different secret societies they have, you're, you're perfectly poised to really enthusiastically uh, go along with the program. Um, so, yeah, I just, I just really was having nothing, none of it. And, and, um, and it was, uh, they, they've literally told me before, you're just like gunk in our system. They're like very, you know, very upset with me saying people like you this this was a different experience but it's it's the same sort of like group that is sort of taking advantage of humanity and it works out for them to keep humanity down and it's it's an all you can eat buffet and you know for you know a lot of the time um and they're just super upset with me saying you know we were going to get the police called on you and send you to jail but we saw that you were just going to get even more inspired in prison and be even more of a problem for us. So we'll just leave you to your own destruction. They're very, just very emotional and very sort of upset. It's, I've, you know, I've seen these beings in person and everything, but I, it helps me to think of them as these just different archetypal forces. That's how I'm able to sort of arrange this these experiences there's these archetypal forces and some are sort of predatory and then some are just very family oriented um and then at the same time what i've also learned from these experiences is that we're all one big family even the predators um you know we're all under we're all that family of consciousness and uh you know we've We've got to learn to live with each other, but um, there, there definitely are these different archetypal flavors that we see. Oh, they sure are. Yeah, that's for sure. And when we realize that we can identify all these different flavors within ourselves, that we have enacted these sorts of qualities at some stage in our own lives, um, even, you know, they might have not been as intense as that, but we still do them throughout our lives at different stages and you know a lot of these qualities that we have transcended now as well because we've learnt along the way and uh, you know these are these are also a test to see how far we have come along the way but you're you've had a very uh, strong presence uh, I would say in the way of intelligence 
So you've been able to hold centre in within your own mind through these experiences. A lot of people don't get to do that. And most people get overwhelmed by the energetic environment and the way these entities like to stimulate people through their senses. Uh, I'm finding it really quite fascinating just how strong your intellect and your intelligence uh, has been, your own mind and your own consciousness has been through this whole process. <laughs> that's that's extremely kind of you, George. Um, well, people there... excel in different areas, Matt. So, you know, some people might be physically strong and have particular muscles that they can really flex and really, you know, some people have got strong arms, some people have got strong legs, some people have different strength in different areas of life. You've got a very strong... Uh, intellect and intelligence um, and consciousness. That's your muscle that you flex very powerfully. You go, I'm just acknowledging your your strengths. Thank you. No, th thank, thank you so much. It's, um, you know, I, de I definitely did have those experiences uh, at first of just being completely overwhelmed. Just, um, you know, just imagine... Uh, just thinking back on that time when I was just so used to the way the world had presented itself to me, and the first time I had been in another reality and just simply just being there, it was just such a such a rush of so many feelings of, oh, uh, this is this is kept from us. Like we we should know about this, and <laughs> oh, but yeah. also such a such a relief. Like, oh, thank goodness that the, that there's more than, you know, the water parks and the mini malls. Yeah. Oh, man, that's that's a huge relief. Um, and uh, the extent to that has been been startling. I'm I'm not talking about the experiences where I just sat there with my jaw open trying to make two cents of the golden text face worlds, just trying to even see where I am and what's going on. Um, those, those are, those are sort of like steps, um, to, to what now after stepping back, I've seen that this has been this sort of, uh, this trajectory that I've just been fulfilling or, or, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of on track with things and it's, it's been, it's just so exciting. I just want to, you know, get on the internet like this and tell people about it because, you know, we we can all have these experiences in our in our own uh, degree. Yeah, and there's people that are having them, but are, I guess, dealing with them in a different way, Matt. So, what are the sort of skills that you can impart in, you know, in your approach to having these kinds of experiences? Because some people just get totally overwhelmed with fear and and then it might take them decades to recover from that experience that they carry the post trauma from. Yeah, for for me, it's it's really been uh, getting to know yourself. That is really the the kind of core. Um, the more you just know yourself, and I I don't mean know yourself like you know you know you're from Sirius, and then you had a mother from. Uh, Regulus and Orion and not that kind of knowing yourself, just your tendencies. You know what makes you angry. You know what sets you off this way, but you also know what makes you happier than anything else. Just just to, to really know yourself. And then when you're put in these extraordinary, uh, ex into these extraordinary circumstances, almost to be a little less extraordinary yourself just to bring your normal humanness to the circumstance um, has, has been a really powerful tool for me. Um, just being like, whoa, 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 this is too much information. Can we slow down a little bit? Or why you have to come on so strong? Or just being actually very honest and direct um, because based on these experiences, it's it's just, it is so direct how everything plays out. Before you know it, you're, you're being um, escorted onto a spacecraft, uh, which has happened. I've suddenly, 
I'm I'm following a a friendly looking cartoon dog, and I'm <laughs> suddenly on a spacecraft all of a sudden. Um, it's 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 actually difficult to talk about because it sounds so crazy. It sounds these things sound so far out. Um, so just to get to kind of talk with somebody like you who's been there as well, and our, our, this kind of audience who's also just open to these kinds of experiences, um, it helps so much just to say, yeah, this, this is what happened to me, and this is what seemed to help in the moment. So, yeah, it certainly does. It most certainly does. And, you know, we get the validation, we get the verification, we get the relief the sense of relief is huge that we're not alone in all of this and we're not going crazy and insane and we don't feel so isolated. It also helps people to take into consideration these broader concepts of reality. And, you know, sometimes you explain things in the way that I can't explain things and vice versa. So it really helps with uh, bringing the information to people and bringing the wisdom to people. And in doing so, what would you say is a... Uh, an important piece of information that you would like to share with the people is there is there like a message that you feel is important that you bring oh yeah yeah i think um there's a few definitely but i think probably the biggest one was what i was i had sort of touched on it a little bit earlier um but reading our lives around us like an open book um Seeing in our lives the messages from the universe coming to us through our habits, uh, through our tendencies, through what makes us happy and through what is ultimately getting in our ways. Um, so just for people themselves to start to be able to read nature uh, with just with that's happening around them it, because it's a it's an individual to individual experience or learning. And I, th I think lots of times it's sort of categorized as, you know, your new age or your Baptist or your Buddhist. And I don't really see it that way based on these, these very strong spiritual experiences. I see it that it's you getting to know yourself and you starting to pay more attention to those subtleties in your life that, we just have gotten used to kind of not paying attention to. Mm. Yeah, life just seems to stream past and we're just oblivious to the amount of interaction that's actually taking place. It's like a numbing effect. And it's a part, part of what's sort of strange to share this message is it feels so obvious. That's That's what I've told myself kind of before. It's like, well... Why would you go out of your way to tell anybody that? It's so obvious. Um, but what actually a voice has chimed in before in that circumstance and has said, well, it's not so obvious to everybody. It's not because people walk down that path and they walk past the rose bush every day. And then, you know, there's, I'm alluding to that saying, you've got to just slow down and smell the roses, <laughs> you know? So the day that you actually do walk along that path and, stop uh when you you know you've been walking down that same path for every day of your life and you do stop and you just go oh isn't that a lovely rose bush and you walk up to that rose bush and actually engage and have a sniff have a smell enjoy the aroma and appreciate its presence and sure it's got sweetness to it it's got a beautiful aroma and you know there's the thorns the thorns are there it's that fantastic bittersweet symphony of life that we experience and when we understand that about every interaction, and that every interaction has an incredibly magnificent process to it, which is really vast in magnitude and scale, with, which is beyond our full scope of understanding at the moment. But bringing into consideration our fractal nature, you know? Exactly. Oh. That's, that's, that's the word for it, is, is the fractal. Um, you know, these, these stories that we see unfolding around us in our lives, they're literally made up of the fractals of the universe, the way I see it. 
Um, yeah. The dramas that, that the humans are playing out of, of violence and uh, greed, uh, this, these are like sort of like the greatest hits of the universe. Um, mm. th this, is, this is what's coming through on, on the cutting edge of evolution. Uh, the human beings are the sort of stage for the universal archetypes to play out uh, because these different energies have pent up. So we've got, you know, we need to address the uh, crazed king who, who is an ultimate warrior that devastates, uh, you know, countless villages. That's, that's on the workbench for nature. Uh, that is being workshopped. Um, I, f I feel like what we're actually seeing around us is the fractal of the universe in, in a sense of it's, it's full of, it's got jealousy in it. It's got lust in it. It's, uh, it's got the whole balancing act. Um, there, there is the theme to the story. There's this, this struggle between, uh, light and dark. And then to see that, that's actually an ideology. The struggle of ideologies is then another archetypal story that we see playing out around, around us. Um, so that's, that's on another level of what I'm intending to, to uh, communicate, is that we're, we're actually directly in touch with uh, uh, the universe. And it's showing us this is what nature is doing. Um, you know, have a go at it here it is you know hmm. it sure is this is what nature is doing yeah it's it's a magnificent system it's a magnificent construct and the realization of that too then brings about so much more of an understanding of why so many people want a piece of it and they want to own it they want to control it for those who have those tendencies oh yes they want their corporate logo to take up that big chunk of our uh, consciousness uh, that's there's a lot of energy there. That's that's literally having a presence with more individuals than you don't. Um, when I had that very uh, sort of negative experience with this that gray, one of the points the entity made is um, uh, we don't care if if you're figuring out the mysteries of the universe or not. As long as the majority of people are uh, kept asleep, then everything's just the way we want it to be. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, but aren't they in for a surprise when this reality itself starts to change as a result because it's a symbiotic process. So I, I, I feel that their arrogance is going to be their downfall and they're in for one heck of a rude awakening and realisation. It will be the biggest hurt and pain that they have yet to experience in their universal journey. No, absolutely. Just just from my experiences where I haven't exactly gone along with the program has shocked them to their core. All right, we will pause it here. Stay with us as we will have a short break and be right back with more of this intriguing and revelatory dialogue. submersed in a construct that was designed to break us and keep us broken but it hasn't it failed we still go on because we were designed from an eternal template of infinite creativity and not a synthetic house of cards built on pride and false power breaking free from the programs and paradigms that hold us down takes courage endurance tenacity and trust the reason it is so hard is because to be a free and sovereign being, we have to smash every lie, even if it hurts. It is good to be reminded of how resilient, unbreakable, magnificent and powerful we truly are. 
And if anything provides a foundation for that, it is the book, Our Universal Journey. Go to ouruniversaljourney.com.au The views and opinions expressed by guests on SuperWoo Radio are not necessarily the views and opinions held by me, the host, George Cavasilis, and SuperWoo Radio. In today's world, it is crucial to exercise discernment, but it is also just as important to see common ground and share in the perspectives that unite us. Music for this episode is brought to you by Runestone. The album, Tome, and is available through MG Music at medwingoodall.net. Welcome back to the second hour of this SuperWoo Radio episode. We now return where we left off in this intriguing and awareness-expanding conversation. Oh yes, they want their corporate logo to take up that big chunk of our uh, consciousness. Uh, that's There's a lot of energy there. That's, that's literally having a presence with more individuals than you don't. Um, when I had that very uh, sort of negative experience with this that gray, one of the points the entity made is, um, uh, we don't care if, if you're figuring out the mysteries of the universe or not. As long as the majority of people are uh, kept asleep, then everything's just the way we want it to be. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, but aren't they in for a surprise? when this reality itself starts to change as a result because it's a symbiotic process. So I, I, I feel that their arrogance is going to be their downfall and they're in for one heck of a rude awakening and realisation. It will be the biggest hurt and pain that they have yet to experience in their universal journey. No, absolutely. Just just from my experiences where I haven't exactly gone along with the program has shocked them to their core. They couldn't Does, they couldn't <laughs> could not believe it. And if if I'm then looking at that as I'm looking at the fractal, I can see, oh, that's an expression of my set of archetypes that are actually not going along with that old dark program. So in a way, that is, is that new energy that is coming through that's saying, no, I see right through what you're trying to pull on me. I'm not going to go along with it, and I'm going to love you for it. Yeah. Come, <laughs> <laughs> Come here let me give you a hug. <laughs> Come here, you. You put on such an angry face all the yeah. time. <laughs> and um, I joked around with a gray like that one time, and he absolutely hated it. Um, yeah, yeah. I he I went up to him and was just like, "Oh, you're just so angry all the time." And he was just like, uh, couldn't help but actually join me in laughter, which was a really uh, kind of amazing moment wow. um, when I just sort of could share this like the joke of sort of reading between the lines and saying, oh, you're going to try and make me afraid of you so that I get hateful and uh, you can then work with those energies. Um, 
And that, that's something I also ended up noticing in one of these, these little experiences is these entities that put on the scary face, they're doing it because they want us to reply in anger and hatred and fear. As soon as I went to the joke, as soon as I went to like, come on, buddy, what are you so like mad about? They just, there's no energetic foundation for them. And they can't work with me. I, they literally will throw their hands up with me and just just walk away or just, you know, poof away or the different ways they do it. <laughs> that's a that's such, you've just made such an important part, point just there, right there. It is magnificent. What an amazing, I don't know if revelation is the right word, but it's the, the wisdom. It is such an important point because there's a lot of people who are having these sorts of experiences and, and it's the way they react and interact. And I feel that you have an amazing approach which helps to disempower them and diffuse them and expose them all at the same time. It's like when I was being attacked by that draconian and it, and it literally threw me around the bedroom. It took me days to recover from that and it was and then it threw me on the bed and... and um, and then jumped on top of me and wanted to choke me to death, energetically speaking. All the blood was rushing from my body up into my head. I felt my, my brain was going to explode. And, uh, and I managed to defend myself. I had to take action by shooting energy up its, um, you know, up its rear end, up, it, up its spine. And it, yeah. it shrieked and then it took off. And then, you know, it took me days to recover from that. And I was so riddled with fear. And I thought, what was all that about? And then the next time... And I had an experience uh, a few days later where I had this entity come to me. My higher self stepped in. I was lying in bed and my higher self just said, just relax and let, you know, let this happen. So I just relaxed there and this entity entered through my right hand and I was just laying in bed and my arms were kind of out, um, you know, stretched out sideways. And it was this, the only way to explain it was like a black, dark, sludgy energy that was pure fear pure mm. fear and i allowed it to enter my body i allowed it to move through my body it came into my arm and went into the torso and down my legs and you know it basically explored every little nook and cranny of my body mm. and i was completely and utterly riddled with the most grossest of fear that probably exists in the universe it was unbelievable how intense it was and I was just facilitating this experience, meaning I, the greater me, because I became the observer in that moment. So I wasn't George the ego reacting. There was none of that going on. There was just the greater me allowing this entity, entity to come in and, and allowing, I suppose, George the personality to have this experience so I could learn what it's like to be completely riddled with fear and then at the same time to understand how the fear doesn't have the power over us but we need to understand how to work with that energy that expression in the universe and then when it left it exited out of my left hand i um i had that ent I, I just didn't feel the fear that i was feeling prior to that and then when that draconian turned up again I actually, um, it was clawing me out of my body. My astro, it was like it was clawing my astral body out of my body. It was really painful the way it was clawing, like um, through my legs and clawing at my astral body. Uh, it was very, very painful, and, and it pulled me out of my body. And I was floating, uh, um, you know, towards the end of my bed. And then I went sort of to the right, and I saw the bed post go through my legs because it was my astral body it was taking out of my body. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I just leaned up in my astral body. I sort of because I was lying horizontal. I sat up, and I and I hugged it, and because I was <laughs> I was in its reality. You know, my astral body was in line with its reality, and I hugged it and I said I love you, because I wasn't afraid <laughs> like before. And this thing just totally shrieked. It freaked out and then took off, and I zipped back into my body. <laughs> and it was it was really and then that's why I'm sharing this experience because when we have that different approach we we diffuse them we freak them out we shock them they they really are expecting us to be riddled with fear and to create like you said that energy that they can work with i think that's a 
most important point uh, and note for anyone who's listening to this to really take note of what's just been shared. No, it's, it's, it really is those footholds. You know, what footholds do we have um, essentially to, you know, to be useful in, in those type of circumstances? Mm. But um, no, it's, it's really, uh, that's, that's why I'm just, I'm just so grateful to, to get to really share this with you guys. Um, because it's, it's, it's just really been working for me. I had, you know, just, just sort of going with it. Um, I'm suddenly in a chamber. Um, I'll, lots of times the aesthetic of these places is very, um, Arabic, like Arabic text or, um, it will, it'll look like the Mayan glyphs, the way that the glyphs are stacked and, uh, uh, everything is sort of alive and in these geometrical uh, meshes and lots of hallways. I'm always running into hallways. And um, so inside of one of these chambers, um, there's a giant doorway. There's also lots of doorways and archways. Um, and a gigantic snake suddenly uh, uncoils and poises to strike me down. And the giant snake uh, roars a thought at me um, saying, my only desire is to destroy and consume you that and just huh. ready to just like take me down. <laughs> and, and I'm saying, and Hey man, I'm just a wanderer. I don't even know how I got here. I really respect you and really respect your space. Please return that respect, that co-respect and respect me and respect my space. And then all of a sudden, this giant astral snake settles down into his coil and just like goes back to sleep. And he says to me, you can look around all you want. Wow. He was to totally fine with me being there wow. uh, because I, I had sort of used my consciousness to set the ground rules um, and I found that if you, if you use your consciousness as a force in that way, it's actually very difficult for the reality to not go along with your consciousness that you're putting out because these different realities are using consciousness. When you put that consciousness out there, it becomes like a structure and suddenly I demand like you show me your true form that becomes part of the consciousness of the reality we're sharing. And it's very difficult to continue to hide your true form once you've sort of added that to the, the overall environment. Wow. What brilliant, brilliant wisdom you're sharing here, Matt. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and, and because it goes along with the construct of that reality is also because we are creators. You know, we, oh, have, the, we have the right to create and, we, you know, we exercise our creatorship, if you want to put it that way, <laughs> for want of a better expression. And that's why consciousness uh, responds, realities respond to our projected consciousness. No, abs absolutely. Um it's with that, I've seen that as we just can't help ourselves. It's, it's not that it's an ego trip of thinking like, oh, we're gods and we're creators. Yeah, we run the universe. No, not like that. It's no. like we have imagination. Mm -hmm. We have two hands. We take thoughts and we form them into a tangible thing you can hold. It's just what we do. It's part of our faculties. It's what we are. Exactly. So well said. You know, people say, "Oh, it's what we're gifted with." Well, no, <laughs> it's not. It's <laughs> not because uh, that in itself insinuates something else. You know, it's not a gift. It's uh, we got to realize that. Um, you know, this isn't this isn't a privilege here. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a natural uh, construct. And, uh, and in, in, in other words, we have, uh, 
I don't know if earned it is the right way either, but we are certainly naturally have the, have these qualities naturally occurring. It's part of being in this universe and part of the process of journeying through this universe. It's our natural state. Oh no, absolutely. There's um it's it's a position. We're in that position. Uh humans are positioned to have an imagination to go about a physical reality and to uh, you know take base consciousness and then to refine it into a refined concept or creation um, I sort of liken it to the way that a, a flower a seed will take the nutrients of the underground uh, soil and these nutrients are just sort of base parts but what the seed will do will take this base parts, these base components, and actually build a complex flower from these base parts. And that's another example of consciousness sort of taking this raw material of the underworld and, and actually refining it into a beautiful blossoming flower uh, that's reaching up for the light. Um, again, that's, you know, I feel another circumstance of the universal fractal story uh, sort of playing out. The beauty and the grace in the opening of a flower amidst the wilderness of chaos. Yep. No, and that's, you know, that idea of the Buddha saying you understand the flower, you know, you can really understand so much mm. about our life, about the world, and about our life. Um, yeah, it's. It's been such an incredible journey. I, you know, when I'm amidst these experiences, I'll suddenly realize like, oh, that rings a bell. That's where this religion got, you know, this aesthetic or they got this idea um, from these kinds of experiences. But now I can see how we've sort of, you know, man has sort of fumbled it with our, you know, our dirty work and used it as social leverage. Um, but I can still see those glimmers of those core truths uh, in these types of religious experiences. Um, they're definitely out there, and there's there's pieces of them in in our our major religions. But we can see how they've been appropriated, as I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's really great observations you're making there. I want to ask you: in all your experiences, have you got uh, experiences that were quite substantial in the sense of uh, enjoyable, um, revelatory, enlightening, joyful, you know, those sorts of, that sort of angle. Oh, yes, absolutely. The, um, let's, let's get into those good ones. Um, you also what? mentioned prior to us having this discussion that you had something new that you wanted to share as well. Oh yes, I um, I do have some some actually. Uh, that's that's kind of a way for for people to get in touch with me and to sort of continue this conversation. Um, and uh, we can go ahead and mention that when we we have a good moment for it. Um, oh, you can mention it right now if you like. Okay, sure. I've I've got a YouTube channel that that I like to stay in touch with people on. Um, I record just sort of ideas and then I also put together some uh, some really nice slideshows with with these kind of concepts um, and actually if you look on Google and you search transcending archons you'll find a video that comes up first by uh, Sophia Zozo so right there on that Sophia Zozo YouTube channel um, I've got a great group of people um, we're a small group uh, but we exchange messages all the time and just sort of uh, keep each other abreast of, of these kinds of discussions. Um, so if anyone is just feeling like, hey, let's talk, you know, please get in touch with me. I, I love to uh, just keep contacts growing is really what I like. Yeah, great. Sounds really good. Mm. So here, here's a very exciting one. Um, I was in such a such a beautiful, um, very pearly space. Um, this one just felt totally 
blissful. When when I've had these experiences, there is no question of motive um, in the truly beautiful, unconditionally loving experiences I've had. Um, I guess I wanted to talk about the suspicious experiences first to set up a groundwork, uh, because in these unconditionally loving experiences, like I said, there was no room for ulterior motives. There, it was just so respectful at every single stage of it and felt just naturally like family. There was literally no room for any form of deception or falsehood. That's a really um, great descriptive because that's what I say. It just feels natural. You know who's your family and you know who's trying to convince you that they're your family. <laughs> no, exactly. It's no, exactly true. It is It is just so um, – there's no mistaking it in in that circumstance. Um, yeah. You, you definitely are more sensitive when, when you're in these realities, and I think that's part of what makes it so easy. It sounds like we're such extraordinary people somehow sensing the, you know, the, the um, faithfulness of a reality we're in. But when you're there, you are so sensitive and just so inherently connected with the space. Um, there's just this direct line of communication. Yeah, I explain that to people. You know, it's like um, you know the familiarity of your family and your friends. You know the, excuse me, the familiarity of the space of your home. The energy has a particular feel to it. You know, you know your home. Uh, yeah. When when you some, go to another building or you're speaking to somebody you don't know, it's it's an unfamiliar presence, an unfamiliar energy. And so when, when you're confronted with these beings that are trying to pose as a particular relative or pose as a particular deific figure and, you know, what have you, it, there's something different about them. It's, um, it doesn't feel yep. like home. It doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel like climbing into your own bed at night. You know what I mean? Or, Absolutely. Uh, or hanging out with a friend and that, that sense that you have between each other of, you know, that comfort. And that warmth and that understanding that's there. Hmm. No, that that's a that's exactly right. Um, so in in this experience, I had uh, I was suddenly in what felt like a mother's womb. Um, it was just these very wow. very soft, tender uh, shades of red and fuchsia. And in this in this room, it's like a sort of uh, sphere that I'm floating in the middle of, and the the patterns in the wall are unfolding flowers, sort of building the space that I'm floating inside of, and uh, all of a sudden I'm very gently um, held in a giant hand, and this this pink hand was also made up of uh, the unfolding flower patterns. And it was just the most tender, motherly love I had ever felt in my life. It was as though wow. everything, everything that was an anxiety or anything that was something that bothered me uh, just peeled away from me like a banana, which is a funny explanation, but that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like this thick layer of crud that just was gone and I realized oh simple as that um, and then it was just me and the presence in the room was just like um, uh, here why don't you try and relax this way and the, the fingers gently relaxed in this hand I was in and suddenly my body is just completely relaxed and this presence is saying um, you don't have to worry so much. That's, I get that a lot. Um, you don't have to worry so much. It was just this very reassuring, uh, loving, uh, presence. And, um, so as, as she says this to me, um, what then happens is the wall on the other side sort of opens up and there's a blue human figure. Uh, that comes in through the wall there. And uh, as he floats into the center of the room to meet me, um, his blue seashell pattern fills the pink room 
of the unfolding flower petals and the two the two different textures perfectly mesh as though these these two friends had just uh come together in one space to meet me wow um and they appeared to me as as featureless humans who held each other at the hip and looked at each other in the eyes just before taking a kiss they were close enough to kiss but they just held that spot just kind of gazing at each other mm. and and I could feel that tenderness and that love and appreciation and then when they had united there with me um, they said thank you thank you for being a caring spirit like you are uh, this what's going on in the universe, the, the questions you have about your reality and what's going on. This is a very, very long um, evolution. Um, and this is what kind of like we wanted a reality and we wanted it to be good. And this is part of taking reality to the absolute limits. Um, and they said, we know that you're very concerned with evil. This is something that bothers you. But you yourself know what it's like to feel resentful, to feel aggressive. And what's at the core of those feelings? It's because you didn't receive the love you needed. It's because of a lack of love. And what's happening to you as well as to other members of your species is you get caught up in the label. You get caught up in the label of evil, the label of good. And you start to build your world out of the label instead of actually building it out of what it actually is. Hmm. So we will build our world with the idea of this is evil and this is good. Um, but really what we're not administering is these evil people doing these awful things they're showing a huge symptom that they need more love and care and attention. Um, and, and essentially they completely addressed, uh, somehow they were able to address every single one of my anxieties. Uh, to, they were somehow accessing, it felt like accessing my genetics and then addressing each one of these things that bothers me. Um, and then at the end of it, I uh, got to ask the question of, um, so what is this all leading up to? You know, what, what's, what's going to happen next? And um, they sort of very happily told me, um, what if you and your friends could go anywhere and do anything? Hmm. And... Um, I was just totally shocked. I had never even considered such a possibility. Um, and they essentially said, that is what we're working towards. Exactly. Uh, That's the completion. That's when we become a complete universal expression. When we, um, it's the same concept that I'm talking about. That... Um, We've had all these amazing journeys. We're going through these fractal um, processes, taking it all through the eye of the needle so we can implode and uh, integrate all of our wisdom experiences and creations in the universe, which will then enable us to go anywhere and do anything. That's, that's essentially what they were expressing to me. And, and one, of, one of those difficult... Uh, one of those difficult sort of road signs to, to get to go past is to have empathy for the predator was a sort of theme. Yes. Um, and to have empathy for the predator by actually being the predator, um, by actually being all the different expressions uh, and having empathy for every single level of it, uh, then you're in a position where that's exactly it's exactly appropriate for your spirit to then ex exchange with all of your skill sets that you have then built up for yourself. Yeah, we only resent them and we don't understand them. We don't get where they're coming from. 
Exactly. You know, we don't understand why they're doing the things that they do. But if you've walked in those shoes, when I say that I've been the most evil of evil that's ever existed, uh, and I try to explain, I say that for people to understand that those of us who are completing this journey, it's not ascension for us, it's completion, it's integration, and it's birthing, it's creating something new, it's taking the whole journey and morphing it into a new expression of life. Which, uh, And so in order to have been everything and done everything, that means we would had to have experienced what it was like to play the archetypal role of the perpetrator in every single expression and form in this universe. And, and, and also, you know, on the flip side of that, to have walked in the shoes and to have been and expressed ourselves in every single loving and caring expression in the universe. So we then know how to navigate this universe of contrasting expressions. No, that's beautifully, beautifully said. Absolutely. And um, that that sort of that sort of reminded me of uh, it's uh, it's one of when you spoke of you know basically that we these the different people in our world are exhibiting these archetypes because that's that's just what needs to come out. Um, there was there was an experience I had that specifically wanted to show me uh, one of these elite people who makes these uh, big decisions. Hmm. And, and sure enough, I'm looking down into this exquisite office. I mean, it's an absolutely, uh, you had never seen an office like this. It's beyond, you know, elaborate, extravagant, uh, whatever. And um, there's this kind of short, little stocky man sitting at this huge desk, and he's on the phone. And um, it's quiet for a moment. And then he suddenly says, nope, that's it. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do it. I'm done. It's over. I'm done. I'm finished with this. And he slams the phone down. He gets up out of his chair and says, nope, that's it. It's finished. I'm not going to do it anymore. I will not do it anymore. And the presence uh, that was with me in this experience uh, said um, he needed to know what his limit was. Yes. He ne- Yes. And once he knew that, he can then know what it's going to take to find himself a center from that extreme wall. And only when he naturally came crashing into the wall himself by his own will was that actually an indicator of that individual spirit's limit in that regard. And that that's what we're doing all the time. We are finding that individual center. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, Matt. Yeah, that was that was a, another good one. I was I was very pleased um, during these experiences. Uh, you know, when I had set off on this journey, I, I made a very strong prayer uh, to remember everything, and I also made a uh, a strong prayer uh, to learn and to you know to have substance to my experiences. And I believe because I put those calls i put those calls out um that's actually what lined it up for me to have these experiences have you ever had i'm just going to take this conversation a different direction if you don't mind oh please have you ever had any physical encounters with extraterrestrials i have um in broad daylight uh, seen some very interesting craft through a telescope um, and when I, when I saw that thing through my telescope, I, I, uh, actually let a scream out loud and fell down on the ground. Um, this, this was before I had any sort of these, um, uh, interdimensional experiences. This was very early on, uh, when I had actually seen with my very own eyes, a, um, it was like a, uh, white sphere, had a tiny silver sphere, uh, that orbited around it like a planet. And as soon as I noticed it, 
it took off instantly and had disappeared. That was an Easter Sunday I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, how ironic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was incredible. I was I was really um, I thought you know this is getting pretty interesting. Um, you know when when things actually started happening in my life, um, such as seeing I would see I'd have a few sightings uh, here and there. And then actually when I remember back far enough, um, I had some some strange ghost encounters as a kid. Uh, so this this has all sort of made me really look at my whole life and see, oh, this, this has been kind of a presence. Um, it just has sort of blown up lately, as it were. Yeah, where do you, where do you think it's heading for you? Like um taking into consideration your own personal individual journey and your relationship with the planet and you know why why it is you've chosen to be here at this time of transition and transformation where, where do you think it's heading for you on a personal level i re i really see it as just just sharing getting everybody to share as much as we all can and being part of that effort um even for people without paranormal experiences, you know, they, they can really talk with the best of us um, about, you know, these kind of considerations and discussions and just sort of bringing a human element to these discussions and having a bit of a presence uh, in these sort of different radio shows. And I'll, I'll do these online videos and, you know, the first one got quite a bit of attention and, you know, someone had sent me my own video before, and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's kind of like just really just helping to spread this, the excitement for this kind of subject matter. Mm. So, and I get, yeah, I on. guess, uh, and another part of it is in um, in my professional work. Um, I think it's really important that we actually do have a foot in the matrix as well as a foot outside the matrix, uh, because the matrix like needs help. It's, um, it's, you know, it's, it is, it really is unfortunate how, uh, the, the sort of corporate model has imposed itself upon humanity. Um, but I can s see people who are listening to this kind of subject matter and you know we we all still are partially involved with the this you know the matrix mind uh, system but to actually in very in small ways or ways that we can to actually imbue this type of universal consciousness into the mundane matrix uh, style professional corporate world so you feel like you've come to change it from the inside out, do you? Yes, people have said that to me before, um, and I I can respect that, and I can see some some validity in that as well. Yeah, I see it all the time. I'm I know that about you. I know that about me. <laughs> That's how I know that about you. <laughs> it's because I know that <laughs> I know this about me, and I'm I'm sure ninety nine percent of the people listening to this will know that about themselves or. If they don't know it about themselves, we know it about them. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't be resonating. They wouldn't be getting what you're saying. Yeah, no, that's that's really uh, that's a really important thing. Is is just encouraging us each other. Um, it's it's really, I think, we're on the cutting edge of some very powerful uh, subject matters, and. Um, it's uh, it just makes me so happy to see it and to experience it and to share it, um, you know, both good and bad. It is uh, it feels like you know making headway or I'm somehow helping nature. I'm I'm somehow voicing things that don't have a voice or just yeah that kind of intention. Yeah. That's great. It's good that you can do that. It takes courage to do that. And I want to acknowledge you for your courage too, Matt. Oh, George, I mean, it's, um, 
guys like you make it easy who have really uh, paved the way. And um, I, I hope that maybe sort of popping up here and there, I can help to encourage listeners who are also, you know, just just on the same path. And I think, you know, at first it is kind of overwhelming. It is like, oh, I, you know, I'm not worthy to speak or to let my two cents be known. Um, but it's just as important as anybody else. Of course it is. Everyone's experiences are valid. And when I, what's amazing is to hear you speak about your experiences and to have the same uh, kind of concepts, uh, philosophies uh, exist in your experiences that, that are in mine. I, I find that fantastic, very refreshing and very comforting. Oh, yeah. No, I think um, I think this is where it's at. You know, I don't want to play favorites, but... Um... I, I just feel this so strong in the core of my being. Um, it's like, let, let's, let's go for it. Let's talk about it. Um, yeah, you know, especially it's, it's not playing favorites. It's like, hang on, there's something going on here. There's re reason and purpose for my life. Uh, there's there's uh, understanding of that reason, of that purpose, of my existence here, my relationship with the planet, the purpose and reason and intent for me coming to this world and having this incarnation? What role am I playing here? What skills do I bring to this planet, to this world? Um, you know, what are the reasons for the interactions I'm having on this either extraterrestrial and or multidimensional level? This is all the things that people need to ask themselves. These are the contemplative areas I highly recommend. And then we, <laughs> we, we start going through this contemplative process. We begin to realize that a theme emerges Yes. No, absolutely. It's, um, that's, that's kind of one of these amazing things, these things I've been able to take with me from these experiences is suddenly I realize I'm a living, breathing alien that's on a crazy sci-fi comic book adventure uh, where we've all lost our memory and we don't know where we're soaring to in the cosmos. And there's the, you know, the most rich of spiritual, emotional content dramas playing out on our surface, and we don't even, you know, recognize it as it happens around us. We are living this comic book science fiction reality. Um, even the so-called normal life is so multidimensional. Um, it's just a matter of recognizing what's already there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, wonderful. So where, right, where, so where where would you like to take this conversation next, Matt? Well, I'd love to share this this another beautiful experience of um, it was. I just had the curiosity of you know where did a universe come from? <laughs> um, as as I sort of mentioned earlier, uh, my experiences have been very kind in addressing my consciousness directly um the sort of you know can, ask yeah can i can i just interject sure yeah oh just having a bit of a contemplation hmm yeah where did the universe where does the universe come from i mean <laughs> how how many people do you reckon ask themselves that in a day <laughs> well, man oh. i want to know man this is crazy so um, it's Good exciting. Stuff. I'm like, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's, you go on this path and you're like, Hey, this is, this is pretty interesting subject matter for contemplation. Um, so it was great. This experience, uh, wanted to tell me, wanted to show it to me. Um, this was an experience with my higher self as a presence. Um, I've met with my higher self, uh, a couple of times. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, he's uh, kind of like a more potent version of myself. And yeah. when I when I meet up with when I meet up with this version, oh, he's full of it too. Um, he's <laughs> like, I suddenly am looking through his eyes at myself, which is a really funny thing to try to say, but um, it's a good way of describing it. Well, when I this is actually a great little start to this, this whole stream of fun stories. Um, 
is I met my higher self and he, he appeared almost like f really cool, like floating by on a magic carpet, like almost as though wearing a Hawaiian t-shirt on vacation, like playing a cool little instrument. And it was like, <laughs> hey man, how you doing? I'm having a great time. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, whoa, it's me. Whoa, uh, these feelings, I can't really explain it, but here we are. And he's like, hey man, um, you know, I'm paraphrasing, of course, um, but this is the yep. kind of attitude and the kind of sense of the moment. Um, he says, "You're we're meeting up right now because you're at a wavelength that's an exact match to me where we are right now. Wow. It's not higher. It's not higher. It's not lower. It's nothing like that. It is just a frequency where we can just very easily be right on the same page with each other right now. And actually... The more you do that in your life, the more I can come through you. This is my spirit talking to me, saying, you give wow. me more room for me in your life, and we're going to be hanging out way more. And um, That's a really good way of putting it, to become more present, to bring more of your soul expression through. To bring more of it through and to give it the opportunities and to give it the conscious space mm. to actually be. Mm. Um, and... At the same time, he said, uh, now, you know, sometimes the, some of the problems you might be running into or frustrations you have is because maybe you're not letting enough of me through. Maybe there's some things in your life that are blocking me from actually coming through stronger in your life. I and wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly agree with that. And, um, and at the same time, my higher self... Because the, in these experiences, they pick up on your thoughts immediately and have the response ready to go. This has all happened so instantaneously. Um, he immediately addresses me after that and says, um, now, I'll come in and help you out when it's absolutely push coming to shove. But I will not disrespect you and come in here and do it for you. Yes. This aspect of myself, you, needs to be going through exactly what you are going through in your life because that's exactly where I'm at. That is that, is that aspect of me getting exactly what it needs and you are that, you are that fractal of me in that circumstance. Wow, um, so amazing to hear you speak in this way because... So often I've talked about, you know, we have a level of spirit, we have a level of, you know, aspects of us on, in the cosmic arena that, you know, as above, so below. If people think we don't have a cosmic ego, then they are grossly mistaken. And so often they fall into the trap of thinking that the higher self, which is separate from the highest self, <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a much lower projection. Uh, oh, yeah. They, yeah, they, no, he... they all aim for the higher self and they don't realize that the, this, this aspect of us in our cosmic ego and, and to do with realms of spirit and consciousness, they, they don't understand how that aspect of us has issues of ego uh, you know, going on and that we are actually, you know, what we're expressing here is a fractal version of all that we have seen, done and been. So we're going to have... You know, all the issues we have in our lives and our personalities here are all the issues we're having, cosmically speaking. Exactly. That that was exactly the intention I received. He was he was grateful because this this uh, you know aspect of myself to this aspect of myself was saying, "Thank you for working out what you're working out, uh, because that's giving me more room to work out what I need to work out." Mm. Because he's he's got his responsibilities that he's doing it in his astral realms and the things that he's got going on um, are of a you know similar to and fro of development just the way I am uh, doing the to and fro of my development um, and so I got the feeling that there's sort of like mats all over the place and that we're all kind of doing our set for the the whole team here um and then that we're all just part of one big family on top of that as an individual and then as like a whole collective 
Um, so just just as as this all starts getting put together, you start to really form a clear picture of just how the universe is ordered and how this concept of a fractal reality can actually exist. Mm. Yeah, wonderful. And it doesn't feel to me like your highest self that you're referring to is actually in the astral. It feels like it's beyond that. Yeah, he, he definitely did have a very meta uh, kind of attitude of like, oh, there you are, good to see you, like kind of, I don't know, like you met an old friend who, who knows you so well mm. um, that you've sort of just got inside jokes that you're sharing just through facial expressions. Um, totally just felt just really cool. Um, but anyway, so I'm... I'm with my higher self and he's showing me, all right, so you want to know how a universe gets started. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and the vision starts as a flat gray. And uh, the, my presence was, was very sure to say, you see gray because imagine a time before black or white. Mm. Uh, oh. And... Um, all of a sudden, in this flat gray, there is a ripple of texture, very subtle, like a drop in the water. Very, very subtle at first, but then faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, faster, faster. Suddenly, in the midst of these ripples of darker gray, a white seed appears. And it's spinning so fast, and the seed starts to expand into a white sphere and what the what my presence communicated to me was time travel is used in the seeding of a universe because all potential energetic expressions have to be seeded in a non-occupied space of the past oh, so, bingo. so so that the unfoldment is exactly what was that intended. which was intended yes exactly oh you've you've got it <laughs> that's awesome yeah and and what was also in that moment communicated to me is um there's the, another reality in the future that is already reaping the benefits of the progress of this universe and we just haven't reached that time yet it's st it's still up ahead and we're getting closer and closer uh to arriving there um you know i really see us as time travelers we just travel at one speed uh but we are getting to that location that is the sort of you know i guess completion that we're talking about here um so anyway, time time travel was was shown to me to be a very important key in uh, the seeding of a universe, and um, so this universe just starts out as a white sphere, and what's inside of it are little black textures. Some of them look like small uh, swirls. Some of them are dots. Some of them are squares. Just all the different textures that you could possibly think of. And they're all flowing around inside of this newborn universe. And when you step back and look at the whole uh, flowing of these textures, it resembled the outline of a human body. You could see all these textures swirl, clumping around where a head was. Mm. And you could see these flow, the streams of these textures reaching out to the outer walls. And they appeared like arms, like thousands of arms reaching out in all the different directions. Mm. And what, what this symbolic representation was showing me is uh, these flows of these textures clumping around the middle of an axle uh, reaching down to the bottom and then trying to quickly get up to the top. It actually formed that primordial uh, structure of a spinal column and extremities and sense, sense uh, instruments uh, and the actual physical makeup of, a, of these expressions or these textures. So it was being shown to me as a very functional form. It was, 
it had nothing to do with any sort of romantic vision of beauty or uh but that that became part of it all these considerations yeah, i think it's became, you could call it like a skeletal framework of what was to come right right and all you know and what it is is it's this interface of these different expressions these different mm. textures mm. that are uh that are trying out new possibilities and working together to form a new texture that ha wasn't there previously. And this was kind yes. of this very basic idea that was shown to me. Um, the next step to it that was very interesting is I was suddenly put in the perspective of that human shape inside of the newborn universe. Wow. So, I was all of these flowing textures trying to get to know each other better. Yes. <laughs> and it literally made me up as what I was. And this was me were in my reality, so to speak. And this was a sort of fractal moment. Um, at this point, I received some sort of strange story about a old spirit who became so obsessed with enlightenment they had designed a holographic light reality for themselves that would divide them up into as many potentials as possible exhaust every possibility of light imaginable and at the end of this process that individual would come back together again and then have completed the uh, experience of the light. Um, I don't know what to make of that story. It just sort of came through in that instant uh, mm -hmm. of being in that position. Um, you know, so whatever, but super cool. Um, yeah, and fascinating. It's fa it's fascinating. And, I wonder. Uh, I wonder if that is the entity who's behind the um, push for enlightenment and ascension, and uh, the entity that's you know I call the God entity, and you know the expression of that energy that is um, uh, creating those heavenly realms for people to go into, and they need to go through a um, their own individual, uh, you know, like. There's got to be a, some sort of screening process for people to enter into that, those heavenly realms, you know, and there's got to be um, devotion towards this entity um, and a subservience towards this entity in order for that to occur, which is part of the screening process. No, ab absolutely. I, I could very deeply feel um, that that was only one archetypal story of the different archetypes of spirits who want to go into the light reality, they're going to play those different roles. You can't help it, but somebody's yeah. going to be the crazed God who um, is so fascinated by their own genetic creations that they become self-obsessed. Oh, and yeah. That, Been there, done that. And, and what's so... <laughs> no, yeah. Actually, I, I could say exactly the same thing um, as... It, which is just funny. It's funny to say that to somebody like, I feel you, man. I know what you mean by being a crazed genetic uh, god that lost yeah. all of them. I mean, and, <laughs> and, and if anybody, you know, is, is thinking, crikey, you know, you, you, what are you saying, George? Well, you know, we've all actually, remember this life is a fractal. We've already done that in this lifetime as well. How many of us has, have obsessed over our bodies just in this lifetime? And some of us are still doing it. I mean, come on. Absolutely. No, it's, it's really, um, it's, it's too good to be true to tell you this, the story directly related to that. But, um, I've had several experiences where my genetics are being read when I'm in these other realities and this is how they get a sense of me. Um, I want to learn yeah. how to read their genetics, Yeah. but anyway, um, I can actually see what they're looking at when, when it's going through me. And I caught a, a glimpse of, uh, me actually, as a completely out of control genetic scientist, I wore this uh, very spacey, um, very flamboyant uh, blue, uh, like scientist army suit, and I sat up on a like a spaceship bridge, 
and everybody inside of my spaceship I had genetically created, mm -hmm. and I was I was very controlling over these individuals, and I did not allow them to have their own existence. Mm -hmm. um, and I could actually pick up that that um, sort of maniacal tendencies I had in that uh, moment of my existence. I still actually have some of those maniacal tendencies or obsessive tendencies or being so self-centered sometimes and caught up in your work uh, that you can't like see your loved ones around you. Um, so it's, it's actually, that's my best way of expressing in a ver very real way our genetics keep track of all these things and these qualities that we don't remember, they actually do play out in our everyday lives, whether we realize it or not. Yeah. And I feel on a personal note, just getting into a personal aspect of your being, if you don't mind me sharing it, I can, I can edit it out later if you'd like me to. Oh, please share. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a very big clue to your fundamental purpose. Cause if we're, if you're getting access to that sort of understanding of self, then these are the qualities and the characteristics and the, the wisdom that you're bringing into this world. So uh, to understand how that same control system that you had on those beings is the same one that's being imposed upon the human race by the beings that see themselves as our complete owners um, and that we all must abide by their rules, their regulations and their control system because they see us as their uh, they they see themselves as though they are our creators. Yes, yes. No, they they have a very big ownership attitude. Yep. Uh, when I've when I've run into this this uh, influence or that vibe, uh, very very ownership related. Um, very very feel very justified in what they do. Oh, don't um, they? Don't they? Oh, very, totally. absolutely, absolutely justified. Whereas, you know, very plainly put, uh, I was, we were all by this entity made a very pathetic, uh, made us out to be very pathetic and weak and all of this, all that kind of stereotype. Um, but, you know, again, it's like through the actions themselves, they reveal their, their true form, you know, um, if they didn't have to be so desperate or if they didn't have to point mm. the finger and call me names, um, you know, they wouldn't have to be trying so hard. So I, I feel like it just doesn't quite add up. The whole ownership over humanity thing, it's, it is. It's, that, it's an old fractal story um, that is actually continuing to exhaust all of its possibilities and work itself out is my feeling. Mm. Yeah, it is. Fantastic. Yeah. I think you're well, right on it. Man, which I'm just so elated to be speaking with you about this stuff because I, I can really feel a strong uh, connection, you know, just in just in the subject matter itself. You know, we can strip all the specifics away and just look at the raw message and just the, the kind of the helpful techniques. Um and I, I think we can see some strong similarities there, which is really encouraging. Yeah, yeah, same. Uh, the, the, the frequencies there, like you and I, we have experiences, multidimensional experiences. So when somebody's expressing themselves, you get to um, place yourself inside that communication. <laughs> so <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm talking, you're inside of what I'm expressing. And you're feeling it. You're looking around. <laughs> you know, you're walking up to the wall and feeling that. And what does that texture feel like? And you know, what does it smell like? What does it taste like? What does it, you know, does it make me feel comfortable? Can I snuggle into it? You know, is it um, poking me, prodding me, pushing me? So um, that's what it's like for us when someone communicates with me. That's how I experience their emanation. And uh, and so when we can be inside of a uh, an animation, a communication, an expression. We get to really um, feel where it's coming from. And so there is this thing called truth. There is an energy of uh, reality and the way things are. And when we get to go inside of that which is being expressed and we get to feel the familiarity with it, uh, it feels like home. It feels like climbing into your bed. It feels like hanging out with your mates feels like, um, you know, having a discussion with an old friend and catching up after a long period of time apart. 
these are all the qualities and the characteristics that we look for. And if we approach it in all, all in the, this way, then you're going to have a more, um, you're going to have a better ability in discernment because you mm. can quickly weed out uh, that which tries to disguise itself and, and that which is truly authentic. Oh, yeah. No, I've, you know, over the years, I've listened to so many uh, speakers who are on this kind of subject. And, um, you know, some of these speakers, it's, it just doesn't have the, the wavelength isn't a match. It, it doesn't mm. feel something is a little off with it. And you, you can't always place your finger on it. And that's okay. Um, I think, I think it is, it's just this, it's a personal quest, whether somebody tells you it is or not. Um, and, uh, that's, that's probably what's rubbing me wrong about some speakers is they sort of make it sound like, you know, you need to know this, or if you only knew this secret ancient, uh, knowledge, then, uh, you'd, you know, you'd, be uh, eating rainbows all the time and you wouldn't ever have any problems or rainy days. So, <laughs> sorry, man. You're going to have to catch up to my splendor um, and, uh, you know, buy my seminar tickets. So, there you go. Um, <laughs> oh, brilliant. But I've been to some good seminars, though, and I've been happy to actually support uh, in funding in, in some of those ways, not to totally diss, you know, all seminars or anything like that, but you know what, you know what I'm talking about. I get where you're coming from, sure, and everyone's doing their best. I just, uh, it's just some people's approach, you know. And I've had it in the past. I still, you know, get that aura of arrogance coming through. But and a lot of people mistake it. Actually, you know, I'm actually not being arrogant when they think that I am. And um, people mistake confidence too for uh, for ego and arrogance. It's really quite fascinating the way. Uh, many people have actually been conditioned and passion gets mistaken for anger because um, they haven't been passionate in their lives for so long and when someone expresses themselves passionately, they misconstrued it. So there is a lot of uh, miscommunication going on or shall I say misperceptions. <laughs> it's probably a better way to put it. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I feel like people's internal police system just goes off at times. Um, and some people will play into that. Some people take advantage of that. Um, it's, it is just very interesting in the way people respond to certain things or the way they express themselves in, in life. Um, you can really see where the triggers are, you know, for a person in coming from society, coming from a religious deity, coming from some sort of a different belief system. Um, it's, it is so revealing. That is why I just cannot emphasize enough this, this message of just really reading life and the people around you, the experiences that you find yourself in. Um, it just, it is, it, life is really an open book just waiting for us to start reading the text off the pages. Mm. Fantastically said. Well, man, I feel that is a most wonderful wind-up, I do, and closure. Uh, can you share with us again, if you have any websites and YouTube channel and what have you, for people to get into your information a little bit more and uh, you know, get to know you and, and see what you're about because I get the feeling that there's going to be a few people who are interested in what you've said, I, including myself, you know, I want to... You know, keep the communication going further, and uh, and I recommend people take a look at your work because you're onto it, mate. You are, Matt. You're really onto it, and you're expressing things so much better than I can uh, about certain subjects. So um, we want to say the same thing, but uh, you know, some people have this magic in in uh, choosing the right vocabulary and expressing that vocabulary in a way that that is a, a resonant match which that which is being shared and expressed. And you have oh, that, man. you have that ability, and I, I I really respect that. It's wonderful. No, and to to, I just appreciate that so much, George. Coming from a heavy hitter like you, man, um, I f I feel like the kind of uh, you've made it easier for you know people like me, um, to to sort of to be 
uh, on your own out there making these these kind of uh, claims um, when there really is just you know there's so many more people now than even like five or ten years ago mm. um, so just to just really make it known the gratitude for you know basically what you've been put through you know you poor man shoot um, you've you've been incredible about it too which is you know one of the things that made me just really want to reach out and get in touch with you um, because the way you've sort of handled uh, you know changes and just how things have been developing over the years I think you've you've continued to be just such a, a great example um, in all of this because it's it is just so easy to get overwhelmed and you know who who to talk to or who to listen to and um, you've you've continued to be one of my favorites, so I really appreciate that, George. Oh well, thanks. I appreciate that acknowledgement. I do. So please um, share that information with you, Matt. I sure will. Uh, the easiest way to find it, like I said earlier, if you uh, Google or search engine um, "transcending archons," uh, you'll find a, a video by Sophia Zozo, and uh, essentially that is my website is just my YouTube channel uh, so if you find that video you can send me a message through my YouTube and um, like I said just whatever's on your mind whatever people talk about their lives or what they just have been through or how this process has been for them and um, I like to keep us all in touch it's it feels really good yeah good on you Matt and I really appreciate you coming on to Super Woo Radio it's certainly a um a richer radio program now that you've been on it. Good on you, mate. From my heart to yours, a really, really fantastic stuff. Oh, thank you so much, George. Super happy about it. Good on you, mate.